Hi, I'm Dave from Hector Smokehouse. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a video about the stay clocker, um, which is a dry aging cabinet. I've always been fascinated by dry aging meat and um, really, really enjoy that flavor, that beefy flavor that you get from dry aging meat. However, I've never been able to do it myself in the past and I was starting to get to the point where I was going to planning to do some videos, but I was going to use some of the different types of bagging systems in a separate fridge. So I was going to use like umami bags and things like that. However, in Australia, um, there was a special offer came on only a week ago for um, a stay clocker. And it was something that I've been looking at. It was quite expensive, but they were doing a really good deal, clearing all the stock. So I actually bought the stair clocker. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go through the stair clocker, go through the different features of the stair clocker, talk about how it works, and tell you a little bit about what I'm planning to do over the coming months. So hopefully you'll enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. And also please click on the little bell in the corner um, so that you get notified every time I send up a new video. So this is the ELA Stay Clocker Home Edition. Uh, the model number is an SL150. Um, usable volume, around about 150 litres, 5.44 cubic feet. Um, and it's got a capacity of around about 65 pounds, which is the same as about 30 kilos. In terms of the size, um, this is around about 32 inches high, and 23 and a half inches wide, and 22 and a half inches deep and obviously you've got to come off the back of the wall and you've got to have gaps around it as well so air can circulate and um, if you go looking in um, Europe or across in Australia that's around about 82 centimeters high 60 centimeters wide and 57 centimeters deep and the net weight altogether of the unit is around 110 pounds which is around about 50 kg inside we have these two chrome shelves which are food grade and are fully adjustable so you can move the clips and go up and down so depending on the size and the height of your meat and um, you can decide how high it goes at the bottom of here and um, you can see the water pan which opens up and um, you put the water in for the uh, humidity control it's got a filter and then it goes through the internal workings and this is can, can be controlled by the controllers on the front of the door or the controllers on the app that you get with this as well. The stake locker is controlled mainly by this front panel. Um, on here on the front panel, you've got the on and off button. Um, you've got different types of light functions. So there is actually a, a standard light that you can turn on and also a UV light. The UV light's really important because that kills the bacteria that are moving around inside and growing on the meat. So the UV light comes in really useful for doing that. On top of that, this button changes from temperature to humidity and you can click between the two and then move up and down to set your temperature and humidity. You can also press two buttons and you can change between um, centigrade and Fahrenheit. In this case, I'm actually working in centigrade, um, but normally when I'm cooking, I cook in Fahrenheit. So I'm a little bit messed up, but that's no problem. Um, so I'll turn this on and let you see what it looks like turned on. So what you can see is the temperature that it is in there at the moment, which is 8 degrees C and 87% humidity. And then by pressing these buttons, you can see 2 degrees C is what I've got it set at. Press it again and you can see 76 humidity, 75, 76. Press it again and it goes off. You can turn on the UV light, which is uh, once you turn the light on there. So you can see the UV on there in there as well. 
at this moment in time. So it's very simple controls on the, on the front and to be able to operate this. At the back, what you can see there is the two blowers. So they're moving and circulating the air around the two fans. And then in between there, there is actually um, a charcoal filter as well, which you can change every year or so. Meat inside the chamber can either be put onto the shelf or you can actually remove the shelves and hang it. This is especially used for charcuterie. So if you want to make salamis um, or you want to make chorizo, then you can change the temperature settings and humidity settings and you can cure those type of meats as well, those type of sausages and those type of things as well. So it can be used for both applications. At the top here you can see the UV light as well. I recommend that you change the UV light probably once a year. At the back, at the bottom, um, there is a smart controller. That plugs into um, a 12 volt controller and that works the Wi-Fi which allows it to connect to the app so you can control and see what's actually happening to the humidity and also to the temperature. You can also then program in different types of meat and it will count the days um, to when you actually started and finished the dry aging. You can also put into there things like the starting weight and the end weight so you can control your yields as well. So here's a bit of an overall view of the insides. You can see the lights, the UV, the fans, the filter, the different types of shelves, the sensors for measuring temperature and humidity, the stackable, uh, sorry, the adjustable shelves um, and the chrome shelves that are in there. You can see the controller at the back for the Wi-Fi and then here at the front you can see the water trap um, for the humidity control as well. Also this is a close-up of the door where you can see the door is actually double glazed uh, as well which helps with the temperature control. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick review of the ELA Stay Clocker um, SL150. It's just a quick review just going through it. So far I've been pretty impressed and um, quite expensive to buy initially. I was lucky to get it uh, in, a, in a, like an offload deal but otherwise it'd be quite expensive. So far um, Temperature seems to have been pretty good. I seem to be having a few issues with humidity, varying between maybe 75 and 82, 83. Don't know whether it's supposed to do that or not. And don't know whether that'll change when I actually put the meat into there. Um, but so far, so good. Um, I like it. The build quality is really good. It's made incredibly well. And um, I think it's gonna be a really good addition to all of my barbecue tools. And it's gonna be really good for being able to make and dry aged steaks. So what I'll be doing now is putting three different types of meat into there. One's gonna be a 30 day, one's gonna be a 45, and one's gonna be a 60. And then we'll see what they go like, and hopefully it's a positive review at the end of that. But we'll see, um, because I'm, I'm totally unsure how it's going to go. Um, I've got three videos on the go, um, one which is going to be looking at um, a rump cap, a share wagyu rump cap, which is gonna be 30 days. One which is going to be a 45 day Jack's Creek Scotch or ribeye. And then I'm also doing a 60 day O'Connor um, ribeye on the bone. And then that's all, all of these are local meats to Australia, two of them from Victoria. So we'll see what they look like and over the coming months, um, I'll be taking the meat out, removing the pellicle and seeing what it actually tastes like and see if it works really well. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and please also press the bell so you get the notifications for the next videos. See you again really soon.